Hello, it's John Lord here on Heading Towards Mid-April. We've had the wettest March in a long, long time. And I was told on April the 1st that April was going to be good, but they made a fool of me, it wasn't good. April was bad as well. Now, the last few days we've got lovely weather. You know, actually yesterday was actually warm and people were sort of worried. It was so warm, there had to be something wrong. How can we have normal weather in Ireland? It's not, it's gonna, but I believe it's gonna go back to normal bad weather in two days time so we'll all feel reassured again but anyway um the great what we know i noticed about the wet march a lot of plants actually liked it the pulmonaries loved the wet weather i've never seen the pulmonaries so good um so anyway here we have a lovely lilac that's a white lilac uh, i think it's madame lemon and beside it we're going to beside it we planted last week this a new variety of spirea it's called, uh, it's not proven winners, it's called Double Play Red. And it said, it said, it's the reddest one you can get. Well, we'll find out. And what's good about it, it has, I think they call them Double Play because they have two uh, 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 interests, different interest, interesting parts. You have the flowers uh, in the summer, but you have the early growth, a bit of color in it. Now I picked the worst one in the batch because I wanted to sell the good ones. So anyway, that's that's planted there. Uh, we're going to plant a new lilac. It's called not boomerang, bloomerang, isn't that just have a tacky uh, a name a word? I'd make up myself. It's called bloomerang, and there's there's the pink, and there's a darker one, purple, and according to the internet, which is never wrong, they rebloom. I don't know. I'm putting it. It's fairly close to that lilac, but it's very different in size. It's much, much smaller size. So, so and totally different color. So that's going there. We're taking. We're going to take up. We take up the fuchsia. We can pot it and reuse it. There we go. Look at. See the little buds starting to expand into shoots. There, and um, we ha actually had uh, very two very cold periods in uh, winter, spring, and a lot of plants. Uh, customers are coming in. A lot of plants died. A lot of plants are not doing well. Uh, it's a very strange. We had a very strange year, early year. But and and these should be much further on. But that's that won't go to waste. <coughs> Spirea here, Spirea will grow here to there. So I think about there. The lazy man's way would be to put it here, but I, I think that extra bit of difference. Soil is fantastic. A um, mixture of heavy clay and roots from the yew, all the time giving activity to the soil and organic matter. And what we do, we have a we have a box inside where I put all these. So I know, because I forget sometimes. And a certain person last year threw away two years of all labels I planted, put all that away on a cleanup. So I have my new box has on the front, do not throw away. Will that make any difference? I do not know. Well, that's, that's the lilac. We space for one more thing here. But we have this gorgeous alum, so we might need to put anything here. We don't know. I just leave it that fuchsia here. Next job, feel the is getting too close. That one's getting too close to the edge. Isn't that lovely? Acer, we think it's Benny Mayaku. Lovely red, isn't it? So these have two are going to go.
look, we'll pot that up and sell it. So it's kind of win-win. Now you see, it's interesting, those leaves inside. Th these would come from a place where you wouldn't get leaves inside. They're not good. Liberty is unusual for lily type plants. They will grow in very shady spots, but you probably should take the leaves out. One. And we have such a good root in them, they won't even know they've been moved. Always, even for a short period, always get them out of the sun. We'll, we'll have them potted up in the nearest time. Back. Just to be on the safe side. This has actually turned into a really, really nice plantation. Good mixture of stuff. If we go in and have a look. The holly. This is a small flared fuchsia. Probably in a week, in a few weeks, take the odd, the dead bits in the top. But we'll see, leave it. Magnolia, Leonard Messel coming out of flower. And a nice plant. Nice patch of Solomon seal. Um, that's really nice. Really like this bed, and it's just—it's one of these beds that we just planted at random. I planted a good few ferns in it. I tried trying to keep it sort of informal. Nice dog wood, and we stripped this up. Put that. We took that line of branches out. Let the light in different that's the hang you down acer and uh malice red sentinel or red something or other red red so i think sentinel or obelisk i don't i'm not sure and we'll just, if we look here take a photograph just look in here david you can see the, the single plant nearly does all the cover you want and the three, the three plants show better so sometimes you can get more by using less. Huh. I made that up. Um, and here's a, what do Fleetwood Mac sing to their plants when they plant them? You can grow your own way, grow your own way. Well, that's as bad as blue meringue, isn't it? I remember um, last year, you, if you, know, you see in there with three nice ferns, uh, I think it's Dryopteris atrata, and I, I put five down to plant, and I went away for my lunch, and I came back, a customer had taken two, well, bought them, you know, so what could I say? We uh, we re-line all the beds, and it's made such a difference. It just gave a neatness to it, and it just more uh, coherence to it. I stripped up this, these, I stripped them right up, let the light in, and the peony, three peonies got more light. It's just about the flower, two massive big flower buds on it. Oh no, not two. One, two, three, four, five. The problem with three peonies. Big issue with three peonies in this garden center is Sunday afternoon when the kids come in with their parents and have a little walk around the garden and it's very hard for the little ones to to resist the big blousy flower. What can what can I say? Um look at this. Oh 
Omphalides capadocica. This is one of the best ground cover plants, uh, uh, perennials you can get. Really, really good. This one is starry eyes. Really, really, I can't rate it highly enough. And it does self seed around. And look. Self seeded in here. And look at it's the it's the ordinary blue of the species the difference so we can lift that and split it maybe but you have to be careful look what's coming up to the regersius see the regersius let me get rid of the sycamore and there we go further on cut back in the last video what about two weeks ago we have a look the high pericum see it coming out no problem um this pampas it's called mini pampas and we're going to do a job in it For mid-April, it's a good time to start this type of stuff. Now, what you do is you go in, when the revs go down, you come back out, you go in, you come back out, and you go as low as you can. Have a, give it a bit of a. Got? Give it a bit of a rake. Uh, I would like to go a bit lower. I don't think this will be powerful enough, but that's it. And incidentally, um, these weeds here, I lift one of these weeds. That's the beautiful geranium pyranicum, really, really nice. And so we need it. Now, when you're raking, when we were taught how to rake, the it's the it's this is the important part when you're waking gravel. It's not it's not this part. This part. So 
we're going to re-gravel a lot of this, but before we re-gravel it, we will give it a pre preliminary rake. And if, if you have bumpy parts that are very bumpy, you just go through them with, with this. You never, gravel is a finisher. It's never used to make levels. It's the harder ground underneath has to be level. The gravel just goes on top as a, as a loose finisher. That's important. Now for, here, for instance here, you could probably get higher here. Probably do that. I don't use membrane underneath because what happens with membrane, if you put the membrane and put the gravel on top, over we'd say five years dust is coming from the atmosphere the whole time so you get a layer of dust underneath and that's strong enough to support weeds so you end up with the weeds anyway you just you just save a bit of time now get rid of debris first debris off first debris to one side So you can see what you're doing, get your debris away. Debris, most of your debris gone. And then. And what happens when it rains? The dirt, the dirt attached to the gravel goes goes down when it rains, and you just end up with the proper gravel. So you might need fresh gravel on your driveway. You just might need a bit of elbow grease. Now, what's next? Yes, we have to worry the weeds. Oh, don't want to damage the camera, man. Uh, let me see. We only a few more minutes. Let me see what will these things do. Take this off, this grass. It's what's happened, it's a miscanthus, it's a very nice miscanthus. It's the opposite of cosmopolitan. Uh, it's a really, really good one. It's got nettles in it. But what's happened is the other the shrubs, the carrier and uh, Ragosa Rose, they've crowded it in and they don't like it too much of a crowded spot. So we, we lift it and we'll, we'll uh, it's very hard for grass to get actually. We pot it and sell it and we keep one plant and put it in a sunnier spot. Bit of weeding here. If we look, we have creeping buttercup there, there there here and here or is it field buttercup Ooh, field buttercup it might be, i think it's creeping but, and there's a you know there's a, a what you call it here we get rid of these this is a lovely uh Evening primrose, dwarf one. See it here, 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 and here. And there was a bark plant trying to make its way up here. I think that was humans. So we. You, you can't pull them by hand because they break. When you pull them by hand, they break off and they, they grow again. I find I find the draw hole particularly good. There's the push hole. The push. And the draw hole, I like the draw hole because you can worry the weeds. You just you worry them. And you just worry them. And you don't even need 
except for the big ones. Get rid of the big ones. Smaller ones, leave them. And some might regrow. But you come back in a week or two and worry them again. And then you, you this part here. This is the part that, that gets straight in the row. The draw hole. A bit more work. See how how precise it is. The willow herb. Need a nice. Uh, I think that's geranium. Uh, it's not rosanne. It's the one that's very similar to rosanne. I can't remember the name. It's it's. I can't tell the difference. There's a weed stone. And ivy. People say, what will I do with ivy? You have to put up with ivy. It'll always be there. It would be terrible if it wasn't there. It's just something that you have to keep on top of. There's nothing you can do. It's no sprays really because it's not, it's very resistant to a lot of sprays. And if you use a spray, you'll kill everything else well before you kill your ivy. So it's just you just have to keep at it. Just one of these things. And um, I, I was in London a few years ago, very nice part of London, lovely expensive houses, wouldn't get much change for 20 million for a house. And one of the main plantings was common ivy and white birch, and it looked amazing. So it has its place, it has it. but not here. Now look at that. the willow herb and look how healthy it is and we don't use fertilizer because you look at your ground and you see this how well it's grown so you, you don't need fertilizer well on the hedge and the draw hole was great for pushing stuff pushing stuff off the hedge and here we have our dandelions um and dandelion is a good example of the term the weed is a plant in the wrong place. I was uh, driving, I think it was along, it was either nice old carriageways, one of those, no, it was going into Dublin, it was the uh, old, the Long Mile Road, and there was last week, and I think, I can't remember exactly, but the whole verge was grassed and just a sea of yellow dandelions, and you couldn't do better it was just absolutely perfect now when i started gardening 50 years ago the lads would be out spraying and getting rid of them dandelions but they leave them there now and, and thank god it's just fantastic so everything for its place everything has its place but dandelions and ivy not here now we can finish off at the end and i better make sure <laughs> we always have to remove all tools when we go for lunch because I'm always afraid some of them will end up in the pond. Here's our Prunus Taihaka one full flower. And I don't know whether I mentioned it before, the uh, Kerry Japonica grown through it. The yellow Kerry Japonica right up 12 foot tall, 15 foot, 20 foot tall grown through it. We removed um, some dogwoods from there. You see the way, and the big bamboo. See the way they damaged the they damaged the yew hedge, but the yew hedge will come back. And we're going to plant. This is north facing, sheltered, so you have to be awful careful with yellow leaves, uh, Japanese and maples, because they don't tolerate a lot of sun. And there'll be very little sun here. And when that poplar comes in to leaf, to be hardly any sun at all. So it's going to go here, but there. Stand back and we look. Here you have the lovely hydrangea aspera. Look at it, it's beautiful. Beautiful felty leaf.
that that's that won't go any much more to here so you want the hedges to go here so see about about here maybe that's gonna go here that's gonna come up you can see can we get it up it's the nicest area The thing about the Lysisteria is, it was brought in, it's called a pheasant berry, it was brought in uh, as an, to use as an understory plant in shrub in woodlands for pheasant cover, so it's called a pheasant berry. It's from the Himalayas and it loves it over here, it seeds everywhere. So we're going to get rid of the other one as well, and that's going to go here. Was it here, David? Mm hmm Exactly there. Well, we have it. What's the hell is it? What is that? I don't know, an alien life form. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it around the back and just leave it and see what happens. Oh look, that looks like eupatorium, but that's bamboo, that's eupatorium I think, I think that's bamboo root, there's a big mass of bamboo here. What? Look, Viking settlement. No, we won't be able to plant this because we need more soil. See. It's, it's sort of, you see the way it sort of goes down? There's something very good in here, so we can't, this is the le soil level, so the soil just about here. That's it. It looks very, seems to be very windy here. Do you know why? Because the wind is coming from the north, which happens about uh, ooh, if you, only a few times a year. The wind always comes this way, never, rarely this way. So we just have, you see it's the right height. We've got it at the right height above the ground. You might have to just mess around. And then in the corner, plant the evergreen I'm not going to do it now but that's the forest flame and it's, it has white flowers close related to rhododendrons pierres but it has very good spring growth that's called forest flame and it's the one we sell the most of because everyone knows it people come in and say have you got flame in the forest have you got that flamey thing have you got that fire bush and they, they all they all everyone knows it so we sell loads of them that's going to go there uh, cherry Flame of the forest. It's not going to affect that, I don't think. I might move it here. I don't know. Spirea. Acer. And then it'll all be herbaceous. And just to finish off, there was something else I just noticed behind you, David. Be careful. Star Wars. That's uh, that's uh, Magnolia Star Wars. Uh, it's just coming out, it's sort of got a little bit hit, but every year it's getting a little bit better. Okay.